Sabatin um, Ali, one of the famous uh, Turkish writers, wrote uh, in his novel, published in uh, 1943, uh, titled Cook Mantolo Madonna, the fur coated Madonna. And there he describes a love story between a young Turkish student named Raif and a Jewish cabaret singer named Maria Puder, set in Berlin in 1928. Among the dialogues, Ali writes what many Turks tend to believe that anti Semitism is not a problem encountered in Turkey. My father was Jewish, says Maria Puder to Raif. Rather, for Jewish. Yes. My, my, might you two be anti-Semitic? Oh no, says Raif, in my country those things do not exist. There were three main religious minority groups in Turkey, and the smallest one was the, the Jewish one, after the Armenian and the Greek. Although Turkey held no collective historical memory of armed strife with the Jews, such, such as in the cases of the Greeks and the Armenian. In addition, until 1948, there was no foreign state to support the Jews, Again, unlike the other communities, Armenian and the Greek. All minorities were called to undergo Turkification process for their integration. And it is inter interesting to know uh, that compared to other minorities, Jews have been seen as the most reliable and loyal minority to the Turks uh, uh, and to Turkey. I would like to present to you now a diagram made by Sonia Chaptai. Uh, trying to answer the question, who is a Turk? And in this diagram, you would see that the Jews come closest to the definition of who is a Turk. Okay, here's the diagram. And you can see again, uh, who is the Turk? The, Tur the, the Jews of Turkey are the closest to the definition of uh, who is the Turk, especially amongst other, uh, the other uh, communities in Turkey. There has never been an official policy of discrimination in Turkey towards its minorities. However, some events were exclusively anti Semitic. The major manifestation of anti Semitism, which took place during the Republican period, um, were the Alizaniego affair in 20, uh, 1927, the Terakia uh, events in 1934, and of course the Van Lickveldese uh, property tax during World War II. A new era in Turkish history began with the AKP rule, with the AKP rule. The war with Iraq opened the door to both anti-American and anti-Israeli sentiments in Turkey. The road to anti-Semitism from here was short and received a political cover accompanied by conspiracy theories. Following the invasion of Iraq, four major events increased anti-Semitic uh, sentiment inside Turkey. The Lebanon war in, war in 2006, Operation Khalid in 2008, the Davos World Economic Forum in 2009, and of course Mahvi Mamra in 2010. Actually, we can characterize the decade under AKP rule by the Palestinian-Israeli conflict, which was the main cause of increasing anti-Semitism in Turkey. As Turkey grows stronger, it strives to be a regional power and intervene in regional conflicts. There has, um, there has always been a consensus in Turkey in favor of Palestinian cause, and that's something that we have to take into consideration when we speak about anti-Semitism in Turkey. It should also be noted here that the distinction, or any distinction, between anti-Zionist position and anti-Semitism has always been blurred in Turkey and actually in other places as well. The conflict, as uh, described before, includes a repetitive argument claiming that the Jews of Turkey are not loyal to Turkey. And I think we witnessed that uh, after the Mavi Marmara, when the Turkish Jews were blamed for, help, for helping IDF soldiers on the Mavi Marmara ship, and were accused of being spies. After the Marvin Amara, a Jewish girl answering blogger Max Blumenthal, considering her real name, which is also a reason uh, for concern, describes this feeling uh, very well, and she says uh, the following. We are often seen as strangers in Turkey. At work, there are always a few people I have to win over. I have to prove my Turkishness to them somehow, and then these people see me as a good Jew. Also, the Jews of Turkey call Israel, especially in public, and that's also something that I witnessed myself, 
they never pronounce the word Israel or Israel. They always call it Medina, the state, or Medina. It's like a code name that they use for, for uh, Israel. Um, also, the Jews in Turkey are somehow forced to understand that the good Jew is an anti-Zionist Jew. And this is why Jews were really scared after the Mavi Marmara. One of them tells Dogen Max Blumenthal, again, and I, I'm citing, when there, was, when there were protests at the Israeli consulate after the Mavi Marmara incident, I felt really scared. I walked right next door and I was sitting at my desk all day thinking, what if they found out, what if they found out I was Jewish and killed me? Maybe they are angry and ignorant. What did they do to me? People from the office were joking with me that they would throw me to the protesters. After the flotilla, things got a lot worse here, she said. The average level of hatred for the Jewish community increased. If the level of anti-Semitism and anti-Israel sentiment used to be a two on a scale from one to five, of one to five, now it's a four, she said. It was getting really scary for a lot of us here after the Mavi Mamana incident, and people were scared to go out for a few days. Outside the consulate, there were fires, burning of Israeli uh, uh, flags, lots of screaming, but, she said, uh, Tariq Erdogan, Prime Minister of Turkey, made an important statement that the Turkish people are not against Jews. The problem was with the Israeli government. The increase in anti-Semitism in the Turkish media over the past decade is a complex phenomenon that manifests itself in several forms. Animosity toward Jews, Judaism and Jewish lobbies. Jewish are demonized, uh, pardon, Jews are demonized in many uh, conspiracy theories, including causing earthquakes and globalization. On the 18th of, Ju of June this year, 2013, Erdogan claimed that the protests raging in Turkey are part of an effort by the American Jewish lobby to undermine the Turkish government, uh, to undermine the, the Turkish government, and, and anti-Semitism directed at Israel and, and Zionism. A Zionism party is also a part of this um, understanding of this uh, policy. The word Zionist uh, often replaces the, the word Jews in Turkish media, uh, and of course with um, many uh, negative adjectives. Sometimes journalists in Turkey incite the public by citing Quran verses hostile to Jews and create an atmosphere conducive to even violence. All these examples raise questions as to the loyalty of Turkish Jews to Turkey. Uh, it also should be mentioned here that um, those in Turkey that hold anti-Semitic attitudes are mostly part of the um, Turkish ultra-nationalist, stream, radical uh, Islam, and the uh, radical left, left in, in Turkey. And I would like to give you some uh, examples now uh, of anti-Semitism, anti-Semitic uh, quotations, all taken from the Turkish media. One of them is, uh, goes like, like this. It, it is the Jew who should read Mein Kampf. Uh, Colonist Aslan Tekin of the National Islamic Daily in Ijama. He also writes, yes, Mein Kampf should be taught in schools. Everybody should read it and should learn the reasons why Hitler came about. Another example, Hitler was a man of foresight. It is impossible not to admire the foresight of Adolf Hitler. Another example, persecution by Hitler much exaggerated. Also in, in Vakita, a columnist uh, named uh, Hussein Musumez. As for the books, uh, the books are divided to, into two sections in Turkey. One of them uh, is the classical anti-Semitic literature in Turkish translation, such as the Protocol of, of the Elders of Zion, Mein Kampf, Kafgam, as said, and the internal, uh, International Jew by Andy Ford. I would, would like to tell you now a story that I'm not sure uh, I haven't come, uh, and I haven't decided whether it's funny or, or sad, but a friend of mine, whose father is a friend journalist of Turkish origin, passed by uh, the international um, airport in Istanbul a few years ago, I think it was 2009, when his mind half gone, Kafka was bestseller in Turkey, and then he saw a pile, piles of books, mind half, uh, in, in the tra tra uh, translated into Turkish Kafka, and as in France, there's a law against anti-Semitism, which is something that does not really exist in Turkey. He was so shocked about it that he took pictures. And then the shopkeeper approached him, asking him, excuse me, man, why do you take so many pictures of this book? Are you the author of this book? <laughs> and the other and the other section of the book, uh, of the, of the book, uh, anti-Semitic uh, books in Turkey, is 
originally, uh, books originally written in Turkish, in Turkish language, set in an internal Turkish context. Such books strongly criticize the current Islamic government, including the Turkish president, the prime minister, and of course the other ruling party members, describing them as pawns in the Jewish scheme to take over Turkey and the world entirely. The books are mostly written by radical Islamic, Islamic elements in Turkey, which believe that the current Islamic uh, government is not conformist enough. On the other hand, these sorts of books were written by AKP opponents as well, as Erdogan and Gul and their family members were proved to be uh, Jewish, again, and, and that again collaborate with Mossad and CIA, and I have a few examples of these books here, and uh, the writer Elgun Porad, who is still uh, is just uh, updated, is still in jail. He was jailed um, a few years ago. Uh, some examples from the entertainment world. A blockbuster film called Valley of Bolts was produced in Turkey based on a very popular series, uh, television series in Turkey. And this movie, by the way, was pulled from theaters in the United States and in Germany. Um, another example. Who remember Jan Bonomo? Jan Bonomo is a young Turk, uh, Turkish pop star of Jewish origin that was selected to be the uh, Turkish representative to the Eurovision Song Contest in 2012. When he was selected, uh, some, uh, let's say, uh, journalist um, was very uh, surprised and they're actually shocked by this because this selection actually caused such a stir in Turkey, uh, questioning the fact whether a Jew could really represent Turkey. That's a question that we uh, should think about. As for the government, and since I have only five minutes, I think I will skip that part because I think we're all aware of what, what Erdogan says and what the AKP, um, uh, AKP um, uh, government, uh, governmental or official say about, about anti-Semitism. I will just have to say a few, uh, just two uh, examples. Uh, one of them is what Erdogan said about the, about the Jews at this university in 2009, there was a ceremony. And actually you should note that Erdogan is usually very careful when he refers to Jews. But sometimes he speaks, as we see, he says something like, look at the Jews and see uh, they have so many uh, great in, in, uh, discoveries and they are very knowledgeable. And because of that, or do, due to that, they are printing money at the place where they sit. And other, other um, uh, rhetoric of Erdogan, I will, again, I will skip since I have no time. Uh, I would like to show you uh, another diagram, because when I prepared this um, presentation, I asked myself, does the, the, the Turkish government have really anything to do with anti-Semitism? I mean, can we really blame AKP for anti-Semitism in Turkey? <coughs> And this is a poll that was taken under the auspices of uh, Vidal Sassoon Research Center at the Hebrew University last year. It's a poll um, I uh, conducted. And we can uh, see here yes, uh, that I asked the Turks uh, the exact same question. I have the existence of, no, no, that's, that's, uh, we don't have time. Uh, we skip uh, that one. Has Prime Minister Erdogan assertions against Israel increased anti-Semitism in Turkey? And look, for his represents agree that Erdogan's assertions contribute to anti-Semitism in Turkey. Actually, this poll is very long, and I let time, so I, I will have to uh, skip it. Um, but I cannot end this presentation without giving you the full picture. I mean, it's very easy to stand here and discuss the anti-Semitism in Turkey and have all this assertion against Israel and against the Jews, but that wouldn't be true if I um, just lead you to one direction of, of thinking, of, of thought. Um, there are other examples that exist in Turkey. I would like to mention a few of them. First of all, in 2004, a few, I mean, not a few, I mean, a group of intellectuals signed a petition calling for zero tolerance for, uh, for anti-Semitism. It was also published in uh, Kim, a Turkish socialist magazine, and those who signed it, and the intellectuals that signed it, were either Muslim or uh, non-Muslim. In 2012, Tele that um, uh, Tanerbe just mentioned before, the national uh, Turkish TV channel that is linked to the government, screened for the first time in the history of, in the history of Turkey, Claude Lanzmann's movie Shoah. Uh, and that was also the first time that this film was screened in a Muslim country. 
Uh, also, at the International Holocaust Remembrance Day ceremonies, government representatives such as the mayor of Istanbul and other uh, officials are amongst participants. I mean, this did have a statement. They do attend in this ceremony. It's very important uh, uh, to note that. And also, Erdogan, uh, speaking about Erdogan, he also has, sometimes he gives mixed messages. Like in 2012, for instance, he met at the airport in Brazil two Orthodox Jews, and they asked him, uh, please protect our people living in your country. And this is important. The Jewish community in Turkey is secure with my own um, leadership, under my own security, with them as our brothers. And, um, and another uh, example that I think that we tend to forget is that Erdogan received a prize, I mean, he was awarded the prize of courage and, uh, uh, courage, and uh, courage to Care by ADL, Anti-Defamation Anti League. Uh, and in that ceremony, he also condemned um, anti-Semitism uh, in Turkey and in general. If to conclude, uh, there are, again, there are many other examples of tolerance in Turkey, but I lack of time, uh, I lack time, so I can't, I can't really uh, discuss them. So I'll just conclude by saying that anti-Semitism in Turkey has increased during the past decade, mainly due to occupied government stance towards the Israeli-Palestinian conflict. However, there is more awareness than in the past to xenophobia and anti-Semitism in Turkey, and although it is currently a concern of the intellectuals in Turkey, we surely hope this trend will continue and reach out to all parts of Turkish society. Thank you very much.